Y'all ready to get in the Word? Amen. I'm ready to get in the Word. Ready to get some fresh revelation? Yes. Amen. I'm preaching this, but I'm really ready for some fresh revelation. I'm expecting to hear some. Oh, I do. Boy, do I. Hallelujah. Please turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 23. And we will be there in just a moment. That's Exodus chapter 23. In Exodus fifteen twenty six, God said, I am the Lord who heals you. I am. That's who I am. I'm the Lord who heals you. The Lord who heals you is God's name, Jehovah, Rapha. Jehovah means the Lord, the self-existent, eternal one. Rapha means the one who mends you, repairs you, fixes you, cures you, makes you whole. He is the Lord, your healer. He not only cures you, He is the cure. Well, you've been saying this every week. Yeah, for eight weeks now. And this goes to part 42, you'll hear it for 42 times. Because we need to hear it and keep hearing it and keep hearing it. Because if you get something that needs fixing, right away you'll remember, I got a fixer. It's the Lord, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. And you turn to Him. He is... Well, let's put it this way. Let's, let's put it this way. He is your next breath, Eric. That's awesome. And, you know, and if, you did, if you didn't get it, you wouldn't be here. Yep. Well, you've got to look at Him being your healer the same way you look at Him being your next breath. You're, you're receiving that throughout the day. Well, receive your healing throughout the day. Rece- he's the remedy. Receive the cure throughout the day. Receive health. It doesn't matter how old you get. That does not mean you have to start going down in health. Amen. Yep. There's nowhere in the Bible says that. There's all kinds of places talks about how strong you are and how strong you stay. With long life, He's going to satisfy me and show me His salvation. It didn't say with long, decrepit life, He will wear me out until I want to sing, I'll fly away. Okay, you follow me? (laughs) Yeah, I'm ad-libbing now. That was not a scripture. (laughs) Yes. No, I don't matter how old you get. It does not matter. Well, how come I'm, I'm slowing it down a little bit? Well, you will get older, but you don't have to get any... Nothing under the curse can be in your body. Amen. Nothing. I don't care how old you are. But how come I'm looking older? Because you're getting older. Being ugly is not part of the curse. Huh? Being ugly is not part of the curse. Being ugly. Anyway... We're gonna go. We're gonna keep on going, Eric. If that's okay, you about to get me in trouble. <laughs> oh man! Oh, we're gonna get older. I used to be outside runner. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to do it anymore. But I still exercise. Gonna stay exercising until the to the day the tractor beam turns on. Praise God. <laughs> He's going to beam us up. Amen? I like that. He's going to be caught up. Yeah, we're going to be flying away real soon. On the glory. When we all get to heaven, what a day that's going to be. Amen? Robin? Amen. Anybody ever sung that besides me and Robin? Who sung that before at churches? When we all get to heaven, what a day that's going to be. Well, we'd see where y'all coming from. You see where Robin and I come from, too. <laughs> Always song. I thought that was a good song. 
That was up-tempo song. That wasn't crying and dying song. That was up-tempo, wasn't it? Yeah, what are we going to... What a day. What a spread. We're supposed to eat for seven years. Bring those elastic pants of yours. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I need to move back to what I was doing. <laughs> and what? That's why they wear robes. That's why they wear robes, he said. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's why we got robes on, Judy. We can eat all we want. <laughs> that was real good. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we're having a good time, but where was I? Oh, Exodus 23, verse 25. God is speaking to Moses, and He says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. God just told you what His will is, for you and me, to take sickness and disease out of our life. It's exciting to hear that. And then you're thinking, well, it's still here. It's not automatic, sweetheart. You must believe what God says. Like I told you last week, when I start a series, I start going in it, but I never know what the body of it's going to, how it's going to fill up. This is turning into a faith series based in healing. It's not a healing series based in faith. It's turning around. God's wanting me to teach more and more faith application. There's a lot of revelation in here tonight, so pay close attention. I'm, I'm excited to get to it. We have to believe what He says, and to do that, it takes being committed to hearing God's Word so faith can come. Romans ten seventeen says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. When you hear and keep hearing God's Word, faith will come. It will arise and become evident in you. And the word evident is telling you, you'll know you're in faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, we have the spirit of faith. So when faith comes, the spirit will be evident. When faith comes, the spirit will be evident in you. What does faith feel like? God's presence. Think about that. I'll, I, sometimes I say things and then I go right past it. You need to hear this message again. And when you, when you hear something, you think, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to meditate on that right there. Mm-hmm. Pastor Chris didn't unpack that. God unpack it in me. And He will. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> he will take sickness and disease out of our lives. But for that to happen, we got to get in the Word To really believe this. To really step out in faith and take this. God's Word is the Word of faith. Romans 10.8 So as you hear the Word of faith, you'll start believing what God says. Well, you told me, Brother Chris, that by His stripes I'm healed. But I, it's just really hard to believe. You're not, you're not spending time in the Word. I can locate anybody if they'd be honest with me and we talk a little bit. You have to make the Word of God top priority in your life daily. Amen. Yeah, this is just not a preacher verse. This is everybody verse. Yes. Amen? Amen? If you want God to be not only evident in you in faith, but evident around you all the time, it's all based on... On His Word and you getting in it so it can explode in you and come out. The Word's a seed. you got, you got to plant it in the good ground of your heart and then it grows. Amen. It'll explode like a, a flower. we got flowers at our house that the sun comes out and poof, it just, they're there. And I'm thinking, how do you come out so quick? <laughs> 
Then nighttime, where'd they go? But that's how, that's how God's Word is. It'll just explode in you. But you've got to get in it. You've got to get in it, get in it, get in it, get in it. Get in it when you want to. Get in it twice as much when you don't. I dare you when you want to watch the next movie, take those two hours and get in the Word. Just do a test. And at the end of the two hours, check the presence around you. And then think back on the last movie you you watched for two hours. Check the presence that was around you at the end of that movie. You're feeding on something. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Whatever you put in your eye gates and your ear gates is going to get in your heart, your belief systems in your heart. That's Romans 10, 10. With the heart, man believes. And then it's going to come out in your life. Well, if that's really true, <laughs> if Romans 10, 10 is really the truth, don't you think we should be doing that? You would think. You would think. Well, I, I, I'm really busy. No, you, you, need to, you need to turn off all the notifications on your phone. If you're getting over a dozen notifications a day, a dozen, man, I'm getting about a hundred. You, ne- you need to get delivered from the ding. <laughs> Appreciate that. Amen, Robin. (laughs) God, deliver me from the dean. (laughs) Well, I got a weather notification. I got a a blue, white, yellow, amber notification. I don't know what any of that stuff is. I I got this notification. I don't have no notifications. My only notification is my wife's calling. Or texting. Or texting. You know, know, that's what I meant. You see how verse name and all that kind of stuff. I turned them all off. I don't want to be bothered. I, I got my mind on the word. Why? Because if Romans ten ten is really true, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the word in me, and it's going to produce in my heart. My heart is the belief system. And if Proverbs 23, 7 is really the truth, it'll play out in my life. So I'm going to put mess in my, in my eye gates and my ear gates. Why am I going to do that? Well, I don't call it mess. Well, the more you get in the Word, the more you'll call what you used to do mess. You really will. I don't hear none of it. I want the Word. Man, you can get, you call me and just start quoting scripture, and I'll be glad I answered the phone. I don't care what chapter and verse it is. I want to talk to you too. Praise God. <laughs> so here's a word of faith right here. It says, "Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes." We were healed. That is a word of faith. more you meditate on that, the more it will uh, arise in you. It will be evident in you in the presence of the Holy Spirit. It will be tangible. You mean the verses? Yeah, because we just use the word verse. It's the Word of God. And isn't Jesus the Word? And the word is spirit and life, John six sixty three. Isn't the word quick and powerful? Hebrews four twelve. Isn't the word grace and peace? John one fourteen. Grace and peace. John one fourteen. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. The truth is a person. And when I meditate on the truth, the presence of the person of Jesus Christ will explode in me and faith has come. Hmm, That's good. You know why that just came up then? Because I'm meditating on it in front of you. That's not in the notes. 
praise God. Boy, that's good right there. It said, by His stripes we were healed. That means He's already given us healing in the spirit realm. Amen? Every one of us has healing in the spirit realm. Every, every bit of healing you need to make it from birth to glory, He's already given it to you in the spirit realm. Now, we just need to believe that we receive it. We just need to believe and take it by faith and it shall come to pass in the physical realm. But you got it all already. We just got to get it from the spiritual realm to the physical realm. But when you decide to step out in faith, you know what you're going to do? You're going to have high expectations, amen? You're going to expect the healing to flow from the spiritual realm into the physical realm, and you'll start experiencing your healing. Well, where does it say we we already have it all? Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, not will, maybe someday in the sweet by and by, who has given us all things. I just connected Second Peter 1, 3 with it. Both of those verses are everything you already got, and I just, I just switched over. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings. What's that? That's your spiritual healing that you want in the physical realm. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says He's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Would a healing be part of life and godliness? If you don't have healing, you're not going to have much life. <laughs> no, not at all. But He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. God has given us healing in the spirit realm, but the only way to get it into the physical realm is by faith. It's the only way. Period. Period. If you don't believe, then your healing that you already have will stay in the spirit realm. Yes, it's yours, but it can't get to you until you get in faith. That's why I said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It has to be number one priority daily. Get in the Word. Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Things are created by the Word of God. (laughs) So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith, the things you see in the physical realm came from what you can't see in the spiritual realm. Pay close attention. God's faith brought all things into existence. Amen? Amen. His faith was what bridged the gap between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. God's faith is what bridged that gap. Faith is a bridge. There's a gap between spiritual and physical. We all know that. How do we bridge that gap? By the faith bridge. By the faith bridge. Yes, it is a good word. Faith. Faith is like a bridge that blessings travel on from the spirit realm (laughs) into the physical realm. Well, I just don't see that. Well, when you say you don't see that, you don't believe that. You've got to get more faith. Amen. Well, how do I do that? Listen to the first 20 minutes of this message. <laughs> I'm not repeating it. Faith is like a bridge that blessings travel on. 
from the spirit realm into the physical realm. But Eric, if the bridge is out, then the blessings will never make it to its destination, which is your physical realm or your physical body. But if the bridge is out, faith is like a bridge that blessings travel on from the spirit realm into the physical realm. But if the bridge is out, then the blessings will never make it to its destination, which is the physical realm or your physical body. That's why it's imperative to hear God's word and keep hearing the word so our faith bridge can stay strong. And that's all the word of God. It's all the word of God. Realize 31,173 verses in the Bible, any one of them have enough power to heal you. Because it's all the presence of Jesus Christ. So when when you're hearing the word, expect the faith to come. Expect it. Whatever you're listening to, expect faith to come. I could be preaching on something that doesn't have anything to do with healing right now. And if you were expecting healing in a service on uh, 10 steps to success, you would get healed because there's healing in my God shall supply all your need. There's healing in I, I desire above all things you prosper Amen. and be in health. As a matter of fact, God always connects it anyways. That's third John two there. But that's a good word right there. We gotta keep hearing it. So jump over to Mark eight. Let's hear some more word and build our faith up stronger. Mark eight, verse twenty two. It said then he speaking of Jesus, then he came to Bethsaida, that's Mark eight twenty two. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. All right, now, just stop at the first verse. This blind man must have had some faith in Jesus. He had to have heard the word somewhere, because if you're blind, are you going to let people pull you around? To find somebody that you don't have any faith in? Because it'll be a whole lot more of a challenge being pulled and tugged to find this person. This blind man could have been in the in the synagogue when Jesus opened up the book of Isaiah and said, "This this book of uh, uh, what's that verse? Huh? This thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me." And he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, Amen. set at liberty them that are bruised, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Could it be? That blind man heard that and said, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. That's just not that usual routine stuff that these religious leaders say. And then he closed the book and said, Today this is fulfilled in your ears. This is all Luke 4. And then Bible history says, In the synagogue, Then he sat down in a seat that nobody's supposed to sit down in because that seat was there for the Messiah to sit down in it. Well, then he was supposed to sit down anyway, wasn't he? And if you read the rest of that story in Luke 4, then they try to shove him off a cliff. I mean, that's a tough crowd, ain't it? That's a... I'm here to help you, and you want to throw me to my death. That's how far away they got. And then he's so full of the Word, since he is the Word... He just moves between them as they come at him. How, how's that happen? Thank you. Well, we, we got super on our natural, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Amen. Amen. 
You just, put, you just keep put the word out there, God will take care of you. Amen. Put the word out there, God will take care of you. Amen. Glory be to God. Mm-hmm. Verse 23. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. Jesus recognized faith in this man. And when he did, he led him out of town. Why did he do that? Because Beth, <laughs> Bethsaida was full of unbelief. Unbelievers and unbelief. Jesus knew the unbelief of this town would corrupt the man's faith. If they stayed there. If Jesus takes unbelief that serious, don't you think it's time for his kids to take unbelief that serious? And I I need no show of hands in here. (laughs) A lot of us spend an ungodly amount of money to get the unbelief piped into us through satellite and cable, moving right along. Moving right along. Just thought, I'm just plugging that in now. We're going to keep on going. We're just going to keep on going. (laughs) Y'all chew on that a little bit, praise God. Let me tell you about Bethsaida. Matthew 11, y'all stay where you're at. Matthew 11, verse 20 and 21, Jesus It says, he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works were done because they did not repent. Jesus is bothered. He said, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works were done in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented a long time ago in sackcloth and ashes. Matthew 11, 20, and 21. He was bothered. How can you not repent after you saw all this, he said? You know, that brings in Romans 2, 4. The goodness of God will lead you to repentance uh, most of the time. Right, you get enough unbelief, your heart is seared. And you can see a, a miracle happen. Well, how about the, uh, the mountain transfiguration? Uh, God, the Father, spoke to Jesus. And the people around said, I think it thundered. You can always excuse it, can't you? Well, that guy really wasn't lame. Well, that guy always had two hands. I didn't see one missing. Can you really be that dense? Oh, yeah. Welcome to 2022. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we ain't going on that route tonight. Praise God. That was a one ungodly town. Jesus had to get him out of this town. Because if he didn't, the faith would leave. And that meant the, the bridge would be out. Man can believe what he wants to. <laughs> but if he doesn't believe God's word, his unbelief will destroy his faith bridge. That's why Jesus got the man out of town. So they wouldn't stop his faith from receiving his healing. Unbelief is the opposite of faith. Unbelief trusts in man's word over God's word. That's pointed. Unbelief will trust in man's word, man's religion, man's ways, man's traditions. It all comes from words and thoughts, doesn't it? Over God's word. Wow. Wow. Mark 7, 13, Jesus was talking to the religious folks. He said, you're making the word of God of none effect. 
through your traditions, which you've handed down, and many things like this you keep doing. You're making the Word of God of none effect. Can I do that? Yeah, in my life. Can I do it in your life? No. But you can do it in your life. I'm not going to make the Word of God of none effect in my life. I'm going to take unbelieve, unbelieving words just as serious as God's words. And I'm not putting that mess in me. I'm going to keep putting God's Word in me. Well, I can handle it. There you go. There's the doorway for the devil to get it in. I'm all right with that music. I'm all right with those kind of movies. You know, I just that's, the, that's what I like to watch. You're letting unbelief get in you. Well, there's no language or nothing in it. There's a humanistic a way of life that that movie is teaching you. I didn't say it's a godly way of life. So, but, but if it's not a godly way of life that movie's teaching you, what's it teaching you? An ungodly way of life. But this is how man does it. Outside of God, it's ungodly. Well, how do I know if my movie's ungodly? Is there any God in it? I just know what it does to you. I know what it did to me. I'm free from it now. Verse 24, And he looked up, the man looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. The blind man stepped out in faith by looking up, and he said, I see men as trees walking as he got some of his healing. He got some of his healing, didn't he? He stepped out in faith. Realize, you've got to read between the lines in the stories of Jesus. He's listening to Jesus. What's he listening to? The Word of God. Even if it doesn't say it in there. That's strong right there. Well, why didn't he get all his healing? Pay close attention. Because he got what he expected in faith. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The word hope is expect. Faith is a substance of things expected. Faith is a substance of things expected. What you expect, faith will give substance to. What you expect, faith will give substance to. What you expect from the spirit realm will travel along the faith bridge over to your physical realm because you expect it. Well, last week, you know, you prayed for me and nothing happened, but you know, you know, that's, I expected it. Okay. Can I get a witness? Have you heard that before? Oh, why are you wasting my time praying for you if you're not even expecting it? Why don't you go to a, one of the dead churches and die with them? I get fed up with that bull. I put all my faith in it and you're thinking, well, it's worth a shot. Oh, really? Let's expect it and get miracles. Get healing. I am livid on wanting to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And have I ever heard somebody say, well, you know, that's what I expected. I didn't think it was going to work. Well, either listen intently or go to some religious place. Because that's what you're acting like in here. And I'm saying that because this goes on, on the internet. None of y'all are like that in here. But there'll be folks hearing this on the internet. Yep. Praise the Lord. Realize this. Jesus didn't go about doing partial healings. Amen. But he did for this man. He didn't go about doing partial healings. Well, what happened? Jesus went about manifesting what people were expecting. That's not his, his best. He wants you to be healed, whole, and healthy. Amen. But you have to expect it. As you believe, so be it done unto you. Well, you you expecting just a little bit of the pain to leave, and you got it. Why, why don't you expect all the pain to leave? Amen? Because faith will give substance to what you expect. 
I said, faith will give substance to what you expect. Would you like substance? If you're expecting total pain free tonight before you leave, would you like that substance or that evidence? Oh, that's good. Verse 25. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus put his hands on him again? Because the man expected more after he experienced so. That's the mercy and grace of God. That's why we've prayed for people up here before two to three times. Thank the Lord for that 10%. Thank the Lord for that 50%. How many times have I said, but God's the God of the 100% club. You want the rest of it. But you have to expect it. Are you saying if I don't get it, it's my fault? I'm saying it's not God's. Now you fill in the blank. Praise God. As you believe, so be it done unto you. We don't see the gravity of that. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. It's going to be done to me how I believe. And, I, and it's not going to be done to me unless I expect it. Because faith can't give substance to it. Your bridge is out. There's no bridge to let the spiritual blessings travel into the physical realm. The bridge is out. Got to build that bridge back up. Amen? Amen. As you step out in faith and experience healing, your expectations will increase. So go for it and expect more healing. Thank you, Father. I spoke the pain in my hand today. And... I I 100% didn't show up, but thank you for that 25%. I'm going to increase my expectations now. I would like more than 25%. You know, if you talk to God this way, He'd love it. And, And start quoting chapter and verse. By his stripes you were healed. I was already healed, so I'm going to go ahead and expect the other 75% that I missed the first time. I know it wasn't your fault. It's never God's fault. Never God's fault. Oh, why did I get healed instantly yesterday and and I prayed today and it didn't happen? Uh, What should I say? What should I say? Well, you never know what God's going to do. He moves in mysterious ways. He's doing the deep spiritual work in you, son. But that's what they say, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I'm going to say, look in the mirror. Oh. There's my problem. <laughs> I got to get my faith bridge built again. I was on a movie marathon all weekend. I saw 12 movies. I would feel like dying if I did that. (laughs) I really would. I'd be so down and depressed. And I would just be oozing in in the presence of fear. And the devil. Don't want to do nothing. Why do people do that? They don't know any better. Why do Christians do it? Because they're carnal. And to be carnally minded is death. It just confirmed what I just said. Yeah. Romans 8, 6. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a good word. Praise kind of pointed, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Double-edged sword. Jesus laid His hands on him again, and the man took another step of faith and got the rest of his healing. The ball is in the man's court, isn't it? Jesus is not practicing trying to get good at healing. (laughs) Amen? Amen. (laughs) So we can't blame God a bit, can we? 
So it must be the blind dude. What do you think? That's a wonderful lesson to learn. Where am I missing it, God? That's a good prayer. Amen? That's a very good prayer. Verse 26, and He will show you where you're missing it. This message will show you. Then He sent him away to His house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. Jesus told the man, don't go back in this town, this unbelieving town. Don't even talk to anyone in this unbelieving town. He said that because the evil company of unbelief will corrupt the good habit of faith. It'll flat out just take it out. Evil company corrupts good habits. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Well, I got healed, and I'm going to go back to my favorite bar and win everybody. No, they're going to win you back. I said that for years in jail. I just want to go back to my neighborhood and tell them about Jesus. How many times have I said, don't go back? They're stronger at winning you back than you are at winning them for Jesus. We have to take unbelief that serious. Unbelief will corrupt your faith and talk you right out of your healing. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place to the devil. The devil is a thief, and he'll steal your healing with unbelief if you listen to it. Don't listen to it. Refuse it. Well, I'm just watching this nice little show. <coughs> Write down in that 30-minute hour show how much unbelief is in the commercials. How many drugs they were trying to sell you for all these problems. And then you start thinking about these problems. Well, if you take this pill, you won't be depressed anymore. Well, I have been kind of down. That's where it goes, doesn't it? That's just how it works. And you're just watching The Price is Right. But you got seven new medicines that you need in the commercials. And you saw that lady walking through the garden. Do you ever feel like this? Distant. Down. Discouraged. Take this pill, and then you'll have a smile on your face. Sound like a commercial, don't it? (laughs) I think I need to take it. Videotape the commercial and slow down the fine print and ask yourself to get rid of depression. Should I risk picking up these 75 things? <laughs> it's unbelief. And after the last two years, don't think, sweetheart, don't think these pharmaceutical companies care about you. Come on. They don't one bit. Don't listen to it. And the government? Oh, they really don't care about you. You better stay away from unbelief. Amen? That's why God's Word tells us to guard the faith He's given us. Y'all stay right right where you're at. I'm reading 1 Timothy. You can go to 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21, but I'm reading it out of the message and the names of God. Translation. The message says, And oh, my dear Timothy, guard the treasure you were given. He's talking about faith. Guard it with your life. Avoid the talk show religion and the practical confusion of the so-called experts. 
People get caught up in a lot of talk can miss the whole point of faith. The NOG, Names of God translation. Timothy, guard the good news which is being entrusted to you. Turn away from pointless discussions and the claims of false knowledge that people use to oppose the Christian faith. Although some claim to have knowledge, they have abandoned the faith. That's what's going on out there. You've got to be so selective on what you turn on. That's what I need. No, you need 1 Peter 2.24. You don't need that pill. But no, that's what I need. No, you need Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. You don't need that pill. Remember, the Word of God is gospels. Take another gospel. Amen? We've been entrusted with the faith of the Son of God. I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. He's entrusted us with that. We have it. Now we have to guard it. Because if you hear this kind of faith healing message, then go, then go uh, uh, turn on your TV and get unbelief till you go to bed tonight, that unbelief is going to win out. It's going to win out. Why is that? Because the unbelief, evil, darkness, the devil's the default. God, victory, faith is the override. You have to choose that. You don't have to choose the other. It just happens. We've got to guard the faith of the Son of God. When you do that, your faith bridge will stay strong and your healing will flow, will travel on your faith bridge from the spirit realm into your physical body. Y'all get anything out of that tonight? Praise God. It's a good word. Good word. Got me some fresh revelation. I can't wait to hear it again. Amen.